Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On. We've been away, I apologize, I was in New York last week, mainly getting sunburnt and then rained on a lot. And this week Jack Bryden is away, I don't know where he's, Ibiza I think or something. Back soon hopefully, our presenters are away. Reese and Craig Mitch are in France following the Euros and Emma Story I believe has been away uh, in Battersea most of the time, but is busy working at Sky because she's a journalist there. So I'm afraid we've been a bit quiet, but we're back today with Spurverts. Well, I say we, I'm on my own. This is Spurverts, or maybe just for the day, Spurvert, the show where we talk about all the things that get us excited to be Spurs fans at the moment. So this is what I'm going to talk about in this episode. I'm going to talk about Eric Dyer's performance for England uh, in the first game. I'm going to talk about how our fullbacks for England, Danny Rose and Carl Walker, I feel have made the spots their own now. Uh, our other boys in that England team, Deli Ali, of course, and Harry Kane, and some comments that Alan Shearer has been making about Kane's chances of staying up front for England. I'm going to talk about how Mitchy Batshuayi has said apparently that he wants to come to Spurs over West Ham and everybody else. We're going to talk about Inter Milan, who have just come under new ownership, potentially coming back in for Eric Lamella. And finally, we're going to talk about last night's Belgian boys' performance. Toby Alderweireld and Jan Vertonghen starting with Moussa Dembele on the bench. But let's get started with Eric Dyer. For me, I've said it before, future Spurs captain, potential future England captain. And I don't want to just talk about the fact that he put a free kick into the top corner. You know, I'll mention it. But the fact was, I think, for England against Russia in that opening game uh, of the Euros for us, Eric Dyer was man of the match. I know other people have given it to Rooney. I think Glenn Hoddle gave it to Danny Rose. Uh, not that Danny played badly, but interesting choice. For me, Eric Dyer, absolutely man of the match. Did everything simple, got some great challenges in, winning the ball back quickly when we lost possession, and just a fantastic leader, I think, for the youth, youthfulness of that England squad. He just shows the communication he gives, uh, the leadership to take that free kick away from Rooney and, and Harry Kane. And then, of course, the finish was absolutely sumptuous. I know a lot of people are blaming the goalkeeper, Igor Akinfeev, for that. But let me tell you how difficult it was. If you notice, Gary Cahill stepped in front of his line of sight. Uh, and it's very rare for a player to go goalkeeper's side. That's why the goalkeeper will take a step to try and cover what's behind his wall. Eric Dyer was smart enough to do it, put enough pace on it. I know they're trying to blame the keeper, but that was just an absolutely sumptuous strike. Like I said, I don't know. It's difficult because Hugo Lloris, obviously, he's only 30, coming 31. Uh, and hopefully he'll be at Spurs for a long time. But in terms of actual leaders at Tottenham Hotspur, I would have Eric Dyer as our next captain. I know Harry Kane has, uh, has been captain a few times and he's probably vice captain in the squad, but I wouldn't put the responsibility on him. I think he's a better goal scorer when he hasn't got the armband on. And next up, I'd just keep Eric Dyer in that central defensive midfield spot, give him the armband and say, you take us to the new stadium, Eric. Absolutely fantastic player. I think he'll only get better and better for Spurs and for England. I'm excited to see how he does against Wales in a couple of days' time. That will be his kind of game an absolute derby that'll be just like the Premier League similar to that Chelsea Spurs game I think hopefully we won't get quite as many bookings uh, or go quite as nuts as we did in that one but I think Eric will be bang up for that as will Wayne Rooney as will also of course our other Spurs players and uh, I'm hopeful that we can get something like a 2-0 win let me know what you think in the in the comments box below what will the score be in the England against Wales game second thing I want to talk about is Danny Rose and Kyle Walker. I thought they were outstanding against Russia. I really did. There was a lot of space down that width. A couple of times where they uh, were given the ball, headed it past their fullback on the inside, came in and gave balls in. This is Kyle Walker first off, gave balls into Adam Lalana, who missed a couple of spots, uh, a couple of shots, sorry. And uh, Danny Rose did really well down the left as well. Him and Raheem Sterling seemed to have a, a decent rapport with each other. I thought Sterling started off well, but kind of lost his edge in the second half. His final ball wasn't very good. But Danny Danny Rose's was excellent all night. Some great crosses where I felt like the forward players, if they'd, uh, you know, if they'd thought a bit quicker, they could have got in and scored a couple more goals from those crosses. So if Danny keeps getting that delivery in, uh, I think it'll really benefit England. I've really noticed, I've mentioned it a few times uh, on the channel before, that over the last few months, both Danny Rose and Kyle Walker, not so much always trying to put the, you know, the paradise ball in uh, across uh, the corridor of uncertainty for the goalkeeper and the defenders, when they get to the byline, they're cutting it back a lot more for midfielders to run onto. And Lalana uh, and Rooney certainly benefited from a couple of examples of that. Uh, and in other games, they will go in. There was, of course, that one uh, where Rose cut it back. Uh, it bounced off a defender's ankles and Rooney came in, hit a great shot and Igor Akinfeev made an unbelievable save, potentially save of the tournament so far actually, along with Hugo Lloris's save that he made from point blank range against Romania in the first game. So for me, 
In terms of Nathaniel Klein and Ryan Bertrand winning those places off uh, Danny Rose and Kyle Walker, I just can't see it happening at the moment. I'd be very surprised if Roy Hodgson chose to uh, you know, rotate the squad. I think he's got to play with a very similar team against Wales because it was a great performance. And I think Danny Rose and Kyle Walker and the aforementioned Eric Dyer absolutely pivotal to England's chances of continuing to play attacking, vibrant football. Uh, I really want them to stay in the team. And do you know what? I wouldn't even be surprised if one of them popped up with a goal because they're getting so forward, they're getting so attacking, and you can just see confidence coming from every pore. So well done, Kyle and Danny. Keep that up. Third up, I want to talk about, of course, the other two guys in the team, Deli Ali and Harry Kane. I'll start with Deli Ali. He had an excellent game as well, especially first half. Very energetic, made some excellent runs. Could have scored. Uh, he had the header, of course, from uh, the left-hand side. Uh, that he kind of got didn't get quite enough of and it looked like Harry Kane might score the kind of second ball from that but he was offside uh, and of course he won the free kick that Eric Dyer scored the goal from with one of his trademark nutmegs he just looks the whole package for England as he does for Spurs of course Deli Alley and will go from strength to strength as the other boys uh, will as I discussed but I think Delhi could do with a goal in this tournament if he's really going to blow up and become you know one of the big names a big talking point young players of this tournament and the goal might not be too far away. He drifts into fantastic space. He really does. Uh, I was watching the highlights of the England-Russia game and Martin Keown was on the co-commentary for the BBC and he was just raving about how easy it is for Deli Alley to ghost into spaces and defenders and midfielders find it very hard to work out where he's going to be. So if he continues to do that and uh, Eric Dyer continues to feed the ball to him through Wayne Rooney, uh, as is what happened for the uh, free kick that he won, then I think chances will come for Delhi Ali. Like I said, I think the game will be more like a Premier League game against Wales, and Delhi as well will absolutely play for that kind of game. I think that's it's got him written all over it. So here's hoping. Second up, I want to talk about Harry Kane for this uh, this third point. Uh, he was the one of the five Spurs boys who who didn't play as well as the others. I think. You know, I think that's fair to say. However, I think he's been getting far too much stick, to be honest. He didn't have a single touch in the opposition penalty area, but that's not his fault as far as I'm concerned. Russia were playing a very high line, and the fact is we didn't create him enough chances. Um, we didn't get enough crosses in. The crosses we did get in were good, but we need to get more in. We need Sterling's final delivery to be better. We need Adam Lallana's final ball to be better. If you get that in, then Harry Kane will get on the end of them. That's his bread and butter. That's what he lives for. Uh, the other point, of course, that everyone's going on about is him taking corners. Now, of course, from the outside looking in, it doesn't make sense because he's, what, six foot two and should be in the box. But looking at, you know, playing devil's advocate, I don't think he's scored a header from a corner for us this season. I can't really remember many times he has. And he is, you know, for me, a direct mix of Teddy Sheringham and Alan Shearer. And he does have a great delivery. Uh, he, he manages to put uh, free kicks and corners into decent areas. I know he hit a few over the back in the first half, but... Obviously, on the training ground at St. George's Park, and once they've got to Chantilly out, out in France, they've obviously spotted something in him. Roy Hodgson and Gary Neville and Ray Lewington have obviously seen they think he's the best striker and deliverer of a football, so that's why he's taking the corners. Now, for me, the thing that doesn't make sense is having Raheem Sterling and Adam Lallana in the box. They're never going to win uh, a header. Uh, maybe they'll win some second balls. But if you get, you know, if you get Eric Dyer, if you get Chris Smalling, and you get Gary Cahill attacking those spaces, if Harry can put a, po a couple of decent balls on the spot, then we may well score from those corners, and then everyone will shut up about it. Finally, about Harry Kane, Alan Shearer has come out, as a few others have as well, and said he thinks maybe this game against Wales is Harry Kane's final chance before he might get dropped. Now, for me, it would be a mistake to drop him. I think he's our best target man for England, as he is for Spurs. But you can see why the press are going to put the pressure on because Daniel Sturridge is in the squad and Jamie Vardy is in the squad. So, you know, they're saying if he has as poor in their eyes a game again, then he will be dropped. My personal opinion is it would be a mistake. I think the mistake that was made in the first game was that Jamie Vardy should have come on with half an hour to go. Not for Harry Kane. I would have taken off Sterling, brought Harry Kane back into the three behind, possibly in the ten and moved Delhi out left. Uh, where sometimes he plays for Spurs and has scored a couple of great goals for Spurs, making runs over the top, West Brom away and Everton away come to mind. Um, and then Harry could have set up goals uh, or chances for Jamie Vardy. Also the ball over the top from deep when we won it back for Jamie Vardy in that last half an hour when the Russian defence was split and the whole match was, was kind of um, opening out, I think would have made sense. But Roy didn't do it and I I'm not quite sure why. Anyway, I feel Harry's got a goal in him. If he gets a goal against Wales, especially early on, 
then this could still be his tournament. I really believe that. You know, you watch games like the Sweden game the other day, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, he had a terrible game, to be quite honest, but there was one moment, he had one moment that got them their equaliser, and that's what happens. You keep your best players on the pitch, as far as I'm concerned, because that is what can happen. Uh, okay, on to some transfer news, guys. Fourth point I wanted to talk about. Michi Batshuayi has said, according to a lot of news outlets, that his preference is to come to Tottenham Hotspur. Obviously, this is a rumour that has been doing the rounds for a long time now, over a year, in fact. Uh, but West Ham have gone in big with a 30 million plus bid, but apparently he has told them he wants to move to Spurs and Spurs only. Makes sense to me. Uh, obviously, we've got the Belgian contingent. Uh, one more to join them would make sense. In fact, I'd go for Axel Witzel as well. He played really well, I felt, in the Italy loss last night. And Batshuayi, you know, he seems the real deal. Everyone wants him. Everyone uh, is impressed by his power. He seems to have a hint of the Didier Drogba's about him. And not only could he play when Harry Kane doesn't play, but I think maybe they could potentially make a good partnership. It would be somewhere around the late 20s, early 30 millions. But for me, 30 million pounds is with the new deal, uh, the new TV money, it's kind of like the new 15 million pounds. So it'll be worth it for a striker. You've got to pay the money. Marseille are in financial trouble as well. So no doubt Daniel Levy, if he's on the phone to them at the moment, he's trying to get that number down as far as he can. Next point, another bit of transfer rumor. Inter Milan have just been taken over by a Chinese consortium. They're putting lots of money into the club for Roberto Mancini, their manager, to spend. And rumours have started up again that they want a piece of Eric Lamella. Now, of course, a year ago, I think it's fair to say a lot of us would say, oh, yeah, well, you know, if we can get anywhere near what we paid, we'd probably let him go. But he's had a fantastic season. He's really improved and he's getting there. And even I, one of his biggest critics uh, in the last couple of years, have had to say, you know, his work rate is top, top notch. His decision making is finally improving. And, you know, he's always had the talent on the ball. Uh, I, but it's really coming together for Eric now. So I think that wouldn't make sense. According to the rumours, though, Inter are interested in a part exchange deal. So money plus players potentially involving Jason Murillo. That's one of their players, not the DJ. And Marcello Brozovic, the Croatian player who is currently on Inter's books. This one remains to be seen. If I was going to give it a transfer rumour rating, I'd probably say about one and a half out of five. I'd be very surprised if Mauricio Pochettino was willing to let Eric Lamella go. And even though Eric did really well at Roma when he was in Serie A, scoring 15 goals in his final season there, I don't think this feels like the right time for him to go back there yet. I think he'll feel he still has much to prove as a Tottenham Hotspur player. And I think maybe they'll all get back to pre-season thinking they can have another go at the title this year. So not so sure about that one. Finally today, obviously I've, I've alluded to it, mentioned it a bit. Belgium last night lost 2-0 to Italy. Bit of a shock result in uh, I think what most people thought was the biggest game of the Euros so far. Jan and Toby started. Moussa Dembele was on the bench, which was a surprise. But if you look at their midfield, they've got Witzel and Nangalan and then De Bruyne and Hazard in front of that. You know, that's a hard team to get into. But... Italy did a real number on them last night. Antonio Conte, who's the manager of Italy, who's going to Chelsea next, uh, you know, he got his team who are not made up of stars anymore. In fact, I'd even say that Buffon is pretty much the only huge name left. Uh, but he got them absolutely playing. They all knew their job. They all knew what they had to do. And they didn't really give Belgium a sniff until late in the game when, uh, you know, they brought on Divock Origi and he missed a couple of chances. And Romelu Lukaku, who is a bit hit and miss, scored a lot of Premier League goals for Everton as well. And teams are sniffing around him. But I guess he's only still young. But that was a bad miss. He needed to put that one away. Uh, and now the pressure's on Belgium. Uh, so well done, Italy, in that one. Uh, but... Oh, no, I know that our Belgian boys will want to bounce back. Hopefully Dembele will play in the, th in the second game and uh, Toby, Jan and Musa can get back on track and get themselves into the next round of the tournament because I'm excited to watch that team play. Wouldn't fancy uh, playing them as England against Belgium, let's put it that way. Anyway, guys, that's been today's Spurberts. Uh, let me know what you thought of it in the comments section below. Let me know what other topics you want to talk about, and we'll try and have a little chat in the comments section about it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook, Spurred on TV, and keep supporting the boys in the Euros and Eric Lamella over there in the Copper America. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, guys. Barnaby for Spurred on, and this is your Tuesday edition of Tottenham Transfer Talk. We're going to rush through it. First up, the Daily Telegraph have talked once again about Swiss teenage